We fought one war of secession with the Confederacy, and they lost. Well, guess what? That happens to be the second war of secession that we fought. Did we not fight another one that was inaugurated with the three strikes at Lexington and Concord, just down the road in Taxachusetts, April 19, 1775, where we initiated an eight-year brutal divorce proceeding from the United Kingdom, and we succeeded. As a matter of fact, we succeeded so spectacularly, as not a nation state, but 13 nation states, that in 1783, in Paris, we had a treaty with 13 different nations represented that had this treaty with the United Kingdom, and what happened is, we succeeded. Unfortunately, for those of you who were at Boston's talk today, and those of you who aren't intellectually enriched enough to have read his book, Hologram of Liberty, 1783 to 1791 were the eight years of peace and freedom we had in this nation, and then the shackles and fetters of the Constitution came aboard. As a matter of fact, in 1860, the Constitution was such that three separate amendment attempts were attempted by folks on both sides of the Mason-Dixon line to make secession illegal. Let me repeat that to make secession illegal. What does that tell you? It tells you that secession is a natural human right. How could anybody in their right mind say that your refusal to opt out from what you think is immoral is wrong? Well, I've got a one-word answer for you, of course, and that's government. How many humans have lived on this planet, by the way? Any guesses? 106 billion. Presently, we have about 7 billion on the planet. About 6% of everyone who has ever lived is living now. But 99% of all of those people have lived under government. There are parts, and I will talk about that later on in my talk, there are parts of the planet where living in a stateless society or not living under government is actually happen happening here as we speak. Now, what I want to encourage everybody here to know, though, is that New Hampshire may very well lead this cavalcade out the door. They may very well lead this country into secession. If instead of adopting what I consider this lame proposition of staffing the legislature with the people that are going to get your stateless society within the confines of the United States, which I think is a pipe dream at best and chaotic at worst, what you need to do is you need to aim higher. You need to make the case, maybe using legislative assemblies, maybe using other means that you wish to, to secede from the United States. Because I'm here to tell you again and again, people will come to me and they'll say, so if I send the right people to DC, will things get fixed? Hell no, they won't get fixed. Because they will go into Mordor on the Potomac and if they're like Ron Paul, they will be marginalized. But if they're like the rest of them, they will be absorbed into the collective there, and they will all think the same way. And that same way has only one recipe for power, and that is to keep it, expand it, and always do that at the expense of individual humanity and liberty. Back up. Back up. This? What's Back up. Is there any doubt in anybody's mind that that is the case? Can you think of one case, as a matter of fact, where even a man as honorable and intellectually sound from our perspective here at Porkfest as Ron Paul has made one iota of difference? Tom Woods, the author of Nullification, makes an interesting study where he says he went back to 1935, didn't go back any further, and I'm paraphrasing here, and he says that the Supremes did nothing more than rubber stamp every declination in liberty and freedom and rubber stamped every expansion of state power at the expense of what I just mentioned. Since 1935, there's no one here, and Boston can probably speak to this, there is no one here who can show me a case in which the Supremes have actually limited the power of government. Well, people will say, what about DC versus Heller? I'll tell you what about DC versus Heller.